Earlier in the programme, we showed you a fascinating but quite harsh sequence of an adder raiding our reed bunting's nest. It left one dead youngster and one living youngster. What happened next? Well, the adults dutifully removed the dead one. That would stop predators being attracted or if it started to decompose, cause problems for the remaining chick. The remaining chick, obviously, they gave it their full attention, bringing in plenty of food. Damselfly going in there, as you can see. But frankly, you couldn't make this up. It's been attacked by one reptile. What are the chances of it being attacked by another? It begins to move around in the nest, thinking, can I make an exit? It would be wise to make an exit at this point, as it finds its way to the edge of the nest when a grass snake appears. Flicking its tongue, sensing its prey, it moves over immediately to the chick. Just like the adder, it nuzzles it to find the right spot to, to strike. For some inexplicable reason, the chick just freezes until the grass snake grabs it and pulls it out of the nest again so that it can find somewhere where it can swallow it. Comes back 30 minutes later, sniffing around to see if there's anything else there. Again, take a look at the body of the grass snake, just like with the adder. You can see that characteristic bulge where the chick is now inside the, there, inside the body of the snake. Two different species of reptiles predating one species of bird. Absolutely amazing. And there you can see the snake slinking off through the reeds. Amazing. Now, that was clearly bad news for that brood of reed buntings. The good news is that it's early enough in the season for that pair to build another nest, lay another clutch of eggs and hopefully rear their young without any interference from reptiles. Not only is it amazing for us to have seen that, but it's really interesting that both snakes went for the same prey in the same nest because typically they'd have slightly different prey and different techniques of catching it. So let's start first of all with a grass snake and have a look at what they would typically go for. Typically they would go for fish or amphibians and it's a grab and swallow technique. They're not venomous, so they, they catch it and then swallow it. And you can see that's exactly what it's doing with this great crested newt. Great crested newt can't fight back particularly. It wouldn't be dangerous if it fought back. And so that's why it can just grab it and swallow it straight away. It would of course turn it around and swallow it head first. Adders, however, have a different technique. And this is what we saw in the nest. They have a stab and follow. So they put their venomous fangs in their prey and then they let it die and then they will follow it and they will swallow it. And that tends to be small mammals and young birds. And that technique works because those small mammals could obviously be quite aggressive if they fought back. So they put the venom in, let it die, and then they go back to get it. We scoured the archives today to see if there was any more film that we could find of an, ab an adder envenomating its prey. We couldn't find anything. So let's take a look at, again, the reed buntings being bitten by the adder. It's incredibly quick, even when it's slowed down. Here we are, comes in, bites the first chick there, releases it immediately, just as Michaela said. It's not a dangerous adversary in this sense, but it's a part of its habit. And here it bites the second chick. The fangs go in and then it backs off immediately, reducing any risk of injury, and it waits for that venom to take it, its impact. And over here we've got a, a diagram, and you can see here is the head of the adder. There's the long tail uh, tongue that it uses for sensing its food. And if I just remove this part of it here, here we have a cutaway drawing of the snake. And here you can see its backward facing teeth, which it uses for gripping hold of the prey once it's got it. But when it strikes, it's able to open its mouth almost 180 degrees like that. And then its next trick is to evert its fangs here. And it's these, of course, which do the envenomating. Marked in yellow here is the venom gland, and it's a modified saliva gland. 
All snakes' venom has evolved from saliva, which became toxic, and then I guess they evolved the fangs to ensure a more efficient way of getting that into the body of their victims. And in the case of the adder, it's principally a hematoxin. It attacks the blood vessels, causes the breakdown of those small capillaries so that the creature loses blood pressure very, very quickly. And that's why we saw those small chicks incapacitated or killed as rapidly as they were. So that's the grass snake and the adder. We have three native snakes that we can find here in Arne. So what about the smooth snake? That has a different technique altogether. And that has what we call a squeeze and swallow. So it gets its prey, it grabs it and then squeezes it, constricts it, almost crushes it, not necessarily kills it, but crushes it, disables it, and then it will try and swallow it. And it's been really difficult to find any footage of that at all, hasn't it? It has, but we've got this extremely interesting photograph which we've got from the Netherlands, and here is a smooth snake which has captured an adder. So it's a non-venomous constrictor which has killed a venomous snake and it's swallowing it head first. And here you can see just the back end of the snake is going down. So this is an amazing image. We know that smooth snakes eat other reptiles, normally smaller uh, than themselves, but that was a big meal for that smooth snake. And just to sum this up, because it is different techniques typically, it's uh, the grass snake, grab and swallow, the adder, stab and follow with the venom, stabs and follows, the smooth snake squeezes and swallows. Slightly different prey, different techniques, and that allows all these three snakes to live together in the same area fairly contentedly.